So now it is Monday, one day after the Packers just had a very sad performance against the New York Jets at home at Lambeau Field, and clearly there are lots of issues going on right now in Green Bay. And so I want to focus on this video on the offense and go through some different quotes Aaron Rodgers had to say about this offense and also his idea on what he thinks could be a solution, what he thinks could need to be changed for this Packers offense to potentially come in and start being more successful. So one stat that is pretty concerning through the first six weeks of this season for the Packers is this. The Packers have scored 107 points through six games, which is 17.8 points per game, which is the fewest points in any six-game span for Aaron Rodgers ever. So this is the worst six-game span for the Packers offense under Aaron Rodgers for his entire career here in Green Bay, which is obviously shows that this Packers offense has not been able to get it done this year whatsoever. So there are four different problems, I think, for this Packers offense that need to be fixed. Number one, looking at yesterday especially, the Packers offensive line is not getting the job done. If we look at yesterday, Rodgers was hit eight or nine times, sacked four different times. Quinnen Williams on the Jets just ate this, this uh, Packers offensive line the entire game. We were not able to protect Rodgers whatsoever. He was getting smacked time and time again. And of course, when your offensive line is not protecting the quarterback, it's going to be very tough to get anything going on offense, whether that's the running game, the passing game. Because if you look at the running game as well, the Packers could not get the running game going whatsoever. And I know we want to get Aaron Jones the ball more, which I think makes sense. But if you look at this game for Aaron Jones, he was only averaging two yards a carry when he did get the ball. He had that one, uh, that one run where he broke away for maybe 15 yards. Unfortunately, it was taken back because of a holding penalty. So I guess the question is there, if the running game is not working like that, if Aaron Jones is only averaging two yards a carry, do you keep feeding him even when it's not, you know, it's not working? And that's not to the really the fault of Aaron Jones. I think you just sort of saw this offensive line just not able to handle the Jets defensive line in pretty much the entire entire the entire game. Then if we look at the injuries now, the Packers have suffered wide receiver. There were already questions entering this year about this Packers wide receiver core. Would it be enough to sustain the loss of Devontae Adams? And would the Packers offense continue to perform at a high level? That has not been the case. One of the reasons is the fact that this Packers wide receiver core has been very injured. Sammy Watkins, of course, injured himself three or four weeks ago. Hamstring injury has been on the IR. He could be back in the next week or so. We'll see if he's able to return, which would obviously be helpful. Christian Watson has been dealing with injuries his entire time here in Green Bay, starting from training camp with the knee injury and then the hamstring injury. He went out last game, missed this game. And then this week, Randall Cobb goes down in this game with an injury that at first seemed like it could be a season-ending injury. It seems now from some comments from Rodgers that Cobb hopefully will be able to return at some point, but it still seems like a pretty bad injury. So now we're sitting without Sammy Watkins, Christian Watson, as well as Randall Cobb with a receiver core that we were already sort of wondering if they would be able to get the job done. So we're clearly lacking in that area. I think it's time for the Packers to go out there and find some other wide receiver and see what teams could be willing to trade away a wide receiver that could be you know, a very talented receiver, partly because of the injuries, also partly because we just haven't really been getting it done when it comes to the passing game. I think that partly could be due to Aaron Rodgers not playing as well because there are lots of plays where he's not hitting guys where you typically feel like he would. I think maybe yesterday part of it has to do with the fact of his thumb hurting. You could tell after lots of plays he was holding it. It seemed like um, he wasn't fully healthy, clearly, with his thumb injury. During the week, the Packers seemed to be not concerned about it. But during the game, I was thinking during that game, like, is this, is this really affecting Rodgers' thumb? But we really haven't seen Rodgers play as well as he has in past years this season. But of course, that I think partly has to do with the receiver core. But I think that it sort of plays into, they play into each other a little bit. Rodgers isn't playing as great as he usually does. The Packers wide receivers aren't playing great either. So there's lots of issues here on this Packers offense. And now I want to go into some quotes from Aaron Rodgers about this game from his press conference after the game. So first off here, he says this, I'm not attacking anything. I just think that based on how we've played the last two weeks, I think it's going to be in our best interest to simplify things for everybody, for the line, for the backs, for the receivers, especially with Randall Cobb's injury. Just simplify some things and maybe that'll help, help us get back on track. That's why we need to simplify things because on the couple drives that we did move the ball, it was very simple things. Very simple plays, no motion. So we need to look at everything and the guys that we've got and what we can accomplish with them. And let's be smart about moving forward. So it seems that Rodgers thinks that clearly what's been going down so far in Green Bay on this offense hasn't really been working. He notes that on the on the drives where things were working, they were running more simple plays. He mentions no motion as well. Um, and I think when you look at Matt LaFleur's scheme, you know, he loves motion. He loves to do that kind of stuff. And maybe it's the guys we have here. Maybe they're just not able to execute the way the, um, the plan that Matt LaFleur has 
for it to work as it should. Um, maybe we don't have the right guys for that. I don't exactly know the answer there. But Rodgers seems like he wants Matt LaFleur to simplify this offense. So from those comments, you would assume he's going to talk with LaFleur this week. And maybe they'll have a new plan coming in this week. Here, here uh, Aaron Rodgers also says this. Nobody works harder than Matt on the plan each week. And nobody comes with better ideas than him and his staff. But if it's not working, it's not because those guys aren't grinding. It's because we're not executing. If you think we have the right players, then we need to simplify things. If you don't, then that's a whole other conversation. Then he finishes here. This is the final quote. The simplest plays are the best plays. The smartest players are the best players. That is what I've always believed in. There are times when we get out there and scheme can look really amazing. And there's times where we are not executing the scheme and the scheme is good, really good. But even the best scheme takes good execution. When we are not executing the way we are capable of executing or the way we believe we should be capable of executing, then it might be time to reel it back in a little bit and simplify some things. So it seems like it's no shot at Matt LaFleur. He's basically saying the scheme that Matt LaFleur is running is just not working with his Packers offense right now. The I guess the complicated areas of this the different things Malifleur does. It's not really working, and that has to do partly with the Packers not being able to execute it. And so because they can't execute it, Rodgers basically is saying, well, let's simplify it and see if we can execute it at that point. So I'm curious to see what the Packers do coming in next week. We're playing the Commanders um, in Washington, which is definitely, I think, a must-win game for the Packers because um, after losing back-to-back games, if we lose to the Commanders, I mean, the talk of what's going wrong here in Green Bay is going to continue. And I think... For us Packers fans, as I mentioned a little yesterday in the video after the game, since Matt LaFleur got here, we haven't lost back-to-back regular season games. And so because of that, it's like we're sitting in a new territory. We're used to losing one game and then the next week getting things back on track. So it's like when you are you have that losing game, you're like, oh, shoot, what's going wrong here in Green Bay? And then typically after that game, things are better. We get all positive again because we're like, oh, yeah, we're back on track. That was just like a small blip on the radar. And so now to have two games where you lose, it's almost like, oh man, like things are piling up more than they have in the past. And so not only for us fans, but also for Matt LaFleur to be in this situation, he's never had to um, deal with this kind of situation yet. And you could see in his press conference, he seemed like he doesn't exactly know what's going wrong. He was asked a couple of times and he said, I don't know. And he said, we need to go back and look at things. And hopefully when they do go back and look at things, they figure out, you know, exactly what needs to be cleaned up here in Green Bay. And I think it's a mix of lots of things, as I already mentioned. Players aren't executing. The offensive line played terribly, um, which means, you know, maybe there needs to be some changes made there. Maybe Elton Jenkins needs to move back to his guard spot. Maybe try Yash Nyman at right tackle. Maybe put, you know, John Runyon Jr. to right guard um, because Royce Newman isn't playing great, and I think the Packers need to switch some things up there. We already saw, as I mentioned, Matt LaFleur do that during the game, but an injury led to Royce Newman coming right back in. So the Packers definitely need to, I think, try to switch some things up on the offensive line because it's not working right now, and they should at least test it and see if that's able to solve some of the problems. If it doesn't, okay, but I think they need to try that. So there are lots of things to clean up here in Green Bay. We'll see if they do it. And as I said, personally, I believe it's time for the Packers to look for another receiver to add here, whether that's an Odell, which now with the way the Packers are playing and Odell has sort of the opportunity to pick wherever he wants to go, I, unless the Packers can start playing really well the next you know three, four, five weeks, whenever Odell will be healthy, I don't see him wanting to come to Green Bay unless he thinks to himself, oh, the Packers are struggling. If I come into Green Bay and fix everything, it's all on me. Like, woohoo. But I just feel like right now, if I had to bet, I don't think you would pick the Packers the way they're playing currently. So maybe there's a guy who you can trade for. I know the Packers, or the, not the Packers, the Panthers are in a interesting situation, you know, with the um, their coach being fired and all of that. Um, I read that they're not interested in trading DJ Moore, but people say things and then the next couple weeks things change like uh what's his name Pete Carroll in Seattle is like we're not trading Russell Wilson two weeks later he trades Russell Wilson so um just because they're saying they wouldn't trade DJ Moore doesn't mean they wouldn't so I think Brian Gudikin should go around and find someone um to trade for um we can you know discuss that later this week who that could be um but clearly there needs to be a change here things need to be fixed up and hopefully that will happen soon but that is all I wanted to cover thank you for watching feel free to subscribe if you would like to see more Packers content Feel free to follow me on Twitter for the occasional thought about the Packers there as well, Luke underscore Beller. But that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully, we will get things figured out.